Hey, what's up? My name is Adam, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use Gumroad. I'm gonna break down an experiment that I did using Gumroad all of last year, the results that I got, as well as new updates to the Gumroad algorithm, things you need to be aware of for selling digital products on Gumroad, and also a new product line that I just released in order to test some new ideas that were derived from research that we did. And I wanna go step-by-step step through every single micro decision that I made so that by the end of this video, you'll have a holistic overview of what works on Gumroad, every single micro decision that you're gonna come across when you start to sell digital products on Gumroad, as well as some resources and free stuff that I'm gonna give away in the end of the video that you can use to launch your business faster and get started selling digital products on Gumroad. If you're ready to go, let's just dive right in. Over the last 12 months or so, we've gotten around 1,600 sales as well as $51 in total revenue on Gumroad. The products we actually published are all free products and the majority of them are based around the research and academic niche. So based on some research and YouTube video comments we received in the past, we recognized that people were looking for academic organization tools like literature review organizers and organizers for improving one's ability to read and synthesize information or tons of research while doing a project. And that really cultivated in a lot of free downloads for the products we built and some kind donations. So thank you for that. The only other thing that I wanted to show is that the traffic and referral sources primarily came from Gumroad itself recommending the product as well as from YouTube. So doing research on potential product ideas based on YouTube and allowing Gumroad to share your product on its discover page are good for traffic. The views mostly came from the United States, then followed by the UK and India. But there's a lot of different folks from all over the world who are on Gumroad looking for digital products. So just keep in mind that there's a really global audience there as well. If you've been following Gumroad, you may have noticed that it's changed its pricing model over the past year. And it's moved from a tiered pricing model with different percentages based on your lifetime sales to a 10% flat fee for all transactions. For the purposes of this video, let's just dive right into the business and money category and see how this is broken out. Once again, you'll see different staff picks, which we don't know how that's determined, and then the best-selling products and the hot new product. So just a blend of best sellers and new products that are gaining popularity. Now let's just dive right into one of the popular tags. And we can see right away that most if not all of them are paid products this is the first free one that we see now i just wanted to show you some research and findings that i pulled together with jonathan about what types of products gumroad may or may not favor as well as how the pricing model could impact visibility hey jonathan here just wanted to share some interesting analysis that we put together around Gumroad and just taking a quick look at the Gumroad algorithm and what performs well. So what you're looking at right here is the top 50 ranked products in the business and money category on Gumroad. So just what shows up as positions one through 50 in the best product section. And we ran, uh, ran some numbers and just wanted to see if we could glean any insights on how the algorithm works and what performs well on Gumroad. And we did find a couple of data points that were pretty interesting. So we'll start right here. And as you can see, over 60% of the products in the top 50 are one-time payment products. So that aren't associated with a recurring subscription fee to access. And that's very likely because most of the products on Gumroad simply happen to be one-time payment products. But what's interesting about this is that it represents an opportunity to create high quality subscription products to have an opportunity to rank higher and stand out from some of these one-time payment products. Another interesting trend that we noticed is when we broke out the 
data into just the top 25. So the first half of this group numbers one positions one through 25. And then the second half of the group positions 26 through 50. It looks like recurring subscription products that are ranked in the top 25 had a much higher average price point close to $440 per month than the top 26 to 50, which just had an average price point of $46 per month. And that was something we thought was extremely interesting because it shows that the algorithm may lean in favor of more expensive monthly products, which certainly would make sense because based on Gumroad's pricing structure, they make more money the more expensive something is. And so it would certainly not be out of the question that they would try and push high quality products that have a higher price point. And of course, def take, th take any of this with a grain of salt because this is just one group of data. It's a small sample size, but it definitely was interesting enough that we thought it you might be interested in hearing about it. And it, it, it seems like there is a bit of a trend that you can glean from this. So we definitely think there is an opportunity to create high quality, high price point recurring subscription products. And there you have it. Cheers. Given the findings that we derived from that research study, I wanted to take what I had learned from my past experiment and improve my online business. I wanted to focus on subscription products that are paid and then build around that with freebies in the future. At the very core of my new online business and product line is a flagship subscription product. This product essentially functions as an alternative for thinking of digital product ideas. And I thought that this would be a cool concept because as a digital product maker with a pipeline and a quota, I want to constantly fuel my pipeline with new digital products. And that's exactly what this product is aimed to do. What it really is, is access to 13 Google Sheets of different categories that are constantly being updated with new digital product ideas. The first thing is the cover photos. This is going to ideally give as much depth of understanding to the potential customer as possible. So here I'm trying to explain, it's a Google Sheet, you can cancel at any time, that it's $20 a month to access it. I specifically say Google Sheets and community access here because I want to distinguish that this isn't a downloadable version or something that they get a copy of. I'm showing that it is a Google Sheet, it is built in Kahana, I don't want people to be confused about that. The biggest thing is including screenshots. The high performing products on Gumroad usually include screenshots that highlight the features and give a sense of the product. It's really difficult to ultimately decide to purchase something if you can't get a good sense of what it is and what it looks like. So try to be as visual as possible. You really can't have too many screenshots. Another rule of thumb is to try to help the customer understand the value and the types of assets that are contained within your bundle. Definitely include the itemized version of it to explain what products are within it. Include how the members gain access, how they purchase, what their payment options are, and what the cancellation or refunding policies are. Include an overview of the benefits and the features, essentially what the person will get. Avoid confusion by having a frequently asked question section, an FAQ. Include as many questions as you'd like, make it very thorough. And lastly, include some way for people to get in touch for support. When you create a thumbnail, include it as a GIF file or a GIF. I'm not really sure which one is, is correct, but you know what I'm talking about. I highly recommend that you think about taking advantage of these free templates. The link is in the description of this YouTube video. All you need is a Canva account, which is free. You click the link in the description, this will pull up and you can start changing the template to whatever your product name is, insert a product description, insert your own screen recording, and then go and you can save it as a GIF or a GIF, whatever you like. Here's also a template for the cover photo. So you can 
do a similar thing where you update the name, description, price, call to action, it's something to start from. So this is free. It's also in the description of the YouTube video. And then I'll also give you a free pipeline tracker that I made that you can use right away. This is what I use for organizing my own product pipeline. So you can have a list of tasks associated with the product you can also give a timeline. So let's say I want this to be done by end of the week. Let's say I want to ultimately ship this product by the end of the month. The progress tracker will update automatically. I feel like this is just a nice way to keep everything simple while also keeping track of all of the digital products that are in your pipeline and what you need to do to ship them. You can click the link to this in the description of the YouTube video. And if you're a fan of this type of content, feel free to give this video a like. It really helps with growing the channel and the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. Feel free to subscribe to this channel. We'll be consistently posting more content about digital products and how to build knowledge businesses. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope you have a great rest of your day.